Hello and thank you for the interest. This will be a walkthrough for Annika, a rigged woman character for Blender. We'll cover some tips and details to get you up and running as painlessly as possible. You will get two zip files with your purchase. There's a Blenders and an Extras. Inside the Blender zip is a Blender folder. And inside there, this is your main Blender file. This is your Textures folder. Make sure these are saved in the same location. There is a Rig Tools add-on. This is the free version of the Auto Rig Pro plugin that was used to make the rig for this character. So if you want to use all the features of this rig, make sure you install this. It'll work for the most part without it, but all of the nice extra features, you'll need to install this add-on. And then here is a fact. This covers the same information that's in this video. And inside the extras folder, these are the extra file types. There are FPX and GLTF files. These two have rigs. Then there are OBJs and STLs. These don't have rigs. None of these have textures. So if you need textures, you'll have to reattach them. And one thing to note about the ones with the rigs, there is a file without hair and a file with hair. Then the last note for the STLs, these are for usually 3D printing. So it just has one different outfit per file. And these are standing just at a relaxed position versus everything else, it's in an A position. Make sure your textures folder is saved in the same location as your Blender file. And make sure you install the Rig Tools add-on then when you open up the blend file, this is what you should see. If the model's all pink, it's because the textures got lost. You can reattach them. Go to File, External Data, Find Missing Files, and navigate to where you saved your textures folder. I saved mine here. Just go into that folder and click Find Missing Files. After that, all the colors should um, load up to look like this. If you haven't already done it, this is how you install the add-on. Go to Edit Preferences and Add-on. Click on Add-on there. Click on install and navigate to where that Blender folder was. Click rigtools.zip. Don't uncompress this. Just click this right here and click install. I won't because I already have it installed, but just click that, click install, and then you're good to go. For this character, I took a modular approach. So the hair and the outfits are going to be cross compatible with other characters that have this exact same body type, but it did complicate posing the character. So let me explain how to do that. The character actually has two rigs. There's one for the body and one for the hair. So you shift click both of them, hit pose mode here or control tab, same thing. And it puts both of these in pose mode. So now you can grab a bone and move it as usual. You can grab the hand, hit G and move it and that moves. Or you can grab say some hair and hit G and it moves the hair. There is a little bit of a difference though. When you click any of the bones from the body, you can see this bone layer here and this skeleton will show you the bone layers for the body. If you click on the hair, it'll show you the bone layers for the hair. This is done so that way you can switch the hair from model to model and it'll still have its own rig. I found it useful, say when you wanna work with the body, you click the hair and click this layer and it toggles off all of the hair layers. Let me show you them on. So you can see there are a lot of bones for the hair. If you um, just hit this top right one, they all go away except for this little halo. So this way you can focus on moving the body without the hair getting in the way. And then you can do the same thing for the body. So instead of leaving it on, you can click this up here. The whole body goes away except for the halo. Then you can click the hair and turn them all on and then you can focus on working on the hair without having to worry about trying to, you know, avoid clicking the body by accident. So I find it's a little bit easier that way. The hair is pretty complicated. There are a ton of bones here. These are the deformation bones. So it's a lot of bones. It's just complicated to work with. I tried to organize things um, in tiers of control. So there's general control, a little bit more control, and then detail control. So this little uh, shape here, this moves everything together. If you move one of these large shapes, it moves a whole strand of hair. And then if you move one of these little circles, it controls just a section of the hair. So there's, so it kind of gives you um, ease, but flexibility. And then the hair, since there's so many of these strands, I broke it up in different layer groups. So this first one is the front section. So you can see this is the front. 
Next is the front mid. And you have the front rear. And then this one is the very back center piece. And you can see the hair all kind of blends together. So it kind of flows a bit. And then this last one here hides everything except for the hair halo and the general control, GRS. Um, let's hide the hair except for the halo and turn the body on. So you can see this first layer here is here. This is the uh, main body movement. So I usually have this on. This is what you do for all, usually have this on for all your poses or all your animations. It's got general movement. This second one here, this is for detailed control. So you can like bend limbs in weird ways or you can kind of like, you know, mess with the face in some granular ways. So that's got a nice range of uh, control there too. This character has a pose library. These are poses that set the bones in pre-saved shapes. And since we have a body and hair rig, there's a pose library for both of these, but most of the poses are for the body. The hair is only to match certain body poses. So I can walk through how to use these. We have a body rig and a hair rig. So for the full body poses, we have a body pose like this here, pose 10 stand. And then we have a hair pose for the same thing. So it's pose 10A stand with a hair at the end. So these two work together. So to pose the body, click the body, unclick, click this pose, and she stands like she's supposed to. If you click the hair, nothing happens. You have to click the hair rig, make sure it's active over there, and then click the hair, and you can see it changes to match. And then the rest of the poses are, are much more straightforward. And this is what you'll be doing probably most of the time. To use any of these other poses, make sure the body is active like that. And then click one of the poses and you can see, you know, she smiles. Oops. There are eye shapes too and eyebrows. So that is how the pose library works. Um, super, super useful. I use it all the time. It just, it just makes life easier. I mean, of course, you might have to make your own custom, you know, expressions or hand poses or whatever, but it just speeds things up. Anika has several outfits. If you go to the uh, outliner and go to the clothing meshes, you can see these are all the clothing accessories she comes with. So I'll just flip through these. She's got stud boots and you can toggle them with these checkboxes. So you can toggle it off and she's got sneakers, these kind of like low heels. She's got a pleated skirt and shorts, a long sleeve shirt and a t-shirt. And she's got full body clothing. So let's turn that on, turn off these two. So you can see she's got a full dress here, a long dress. Uh, this has physics on it. So let's look at that here. So you can see this little uh, black, these little grid lines here, These uh, this wireframe. This is the collision object to collide against the dress. So if you hit play, and the dress has physics. So if you hit play, you can see the dress kind of like reacts to the body here like that. That's kind of fun. Um, if you don't want to use physics, there is a rigged version. S same dress, I just cut it short. So this is the same thing. It's just got standard weight painting. Oh, and she's got accessories. So there's, there's just a couple of um, weapons. Pistol idol. Let's pose her hair. Let's turn on the handgun. Yay. Okay. She's got a, she's got a gun. And I forgot she's got a rifle also. Auto Rig Pro makes a lot of really nice rig features, so I can show you those. If you click on the hand or the feet or the head, you'll see a bunch of tools over here in this tools panel. So there's things like snap IKFK. If you hit G in IK mode, the arm follows the hand. If you snap it to FK mode and you hit R to move the arms like that. So there's different ways of doing things. There's things like stretch length. So if you move the hand right here, the arm doesn't stretch. If you move it like that, it stretches really far or really short. Elbow pinning is kind of an interesting one. So it the elbow snaps to this little circle. 
So right now, if you move it, it just moves away. If you snap it, when you move the hand, the elbow stays. It's kind of a, never actually used that one. Uh, finger grasp, that's pretty good. It just moves all the fingers at once. Uh, snap child of, so the hand has a parent, a child of constraint. So it's you can add one more of these to it, another child constraint. And you can say attach it to a doorknob or something. And so this just makes it easy to switch which parent to follow. So a bunch of nice tools to make things easier. Um, it has a bunch for the eyes, or a few for the eyes, and for the head. So go and explore and see, see how that works. I put a link in the description below for the documentation for the Autoric Pro plugin. But keep in mind, that's a link for the paid plugin. Um, this is the free version, but it does talk about all of these little details. In addition to the pose library that I talked about earlier, this model also has a bunch of shape keys for uh, facial expressions or lip syncing, and I can show you where those are. You won't really need these um, if you're just doing more standard Blender stuff, but sometimes you might use it for motion capture. So I can show you where it is. Um, if you toggle off body for Blender, turn on body for export, you can see there is a um, whole body Annika version here. So this is uh, everything stuck together in one whole giant rig. And if you go to the object data properties, you can see there are a whole bunch of shape keys here. So a lot of these are the same, like all these smile special, these are the same as the poses, um, but there are different ones here. So these VRC ones, these are the same also. These are the Oculus method of doing um, lip sync, and uh, these are used for VRCs. Uh, some of these are common to VRCs also, these blink left and blink right. And then these, I think from nose, from tongue out and up, these are um, Apple AR kit vis, uh, visines or blend shapes, and these are used for another version of motion capture. And if you want to see what one of these does, you can just grab the mesh, make sure you can see the shape keys here, and just, you know, find one that's interesting. You can just, you know, see what it does. You can see the bones don't change. These black circles, these are the bones for the lips, but the mesh itself actually deforms for these shapes. So if you need them, they're there. This character has a modular design, so any character that has the same body type will have cross-compatible clothing and hair. There might be some clipping here and there, but for the most part, it'll, it'll um, transfer fine. And so this character has a female A or femme A body type. So if you have other clothes that has this type, then it's cross compatible. And so I'll walk you through how to, how to um, add clothing. So here's our example uh, shirt we're going to import. Grab the mesh here, go to object data properties, like this little wrench, click that, then click on this little X here to disconnect it from the rig. Okay, so now it's not attached. So grab the shirt, control C, then go to the Blender file that you want to add the shirt to here and make a new collection. So I'm going to go here, right click, new collection. And I'm gonna just hide this with the eyeball temporarily. I'm gonna click that new collection, hit Control V, and everything should be fine. Sometimes you will get an error though, so I'm gonna show you that error. So when you paste it, sometimes you'll get this mess, which is like, what's going on? Um, that's because all the extras didn't disconnect properly. So grab your mesh, and in the outliner, you'll see this is the mesh. So you don't wanna get rid of that. So unclick that but click all the other things that came in when you pasted and just shift click there and delete. So now I just have the new shirt, which is what I wanted. Okay, so let's bring back everything else and the shirt's hard to see, but it's selected right now. Go to object data properties and then click this eyedropper and click 
the rig and it's connected. Another way you can do it is click here and go to the rig and it's the same thing. And so now we can check it. Let's see, let's turn off the other clothing. So turn off the tops. So now we have our new shirt here. Oops. And if we go to pose mode and move something, you can see it now works and it should be weight painted perfectly to match. This is how to add one of the cross compatible hairstyles. I don't have one right now, so I'm gonna use this as an example. But click your armature, click this little, there should be a white X there, click that so that this field is blank. We want it to blank like that. And then shift click your mesh, hit control C, and then go to the file where you want to attach your hair and then make a new collection. And let's hide things so it's easier for us. Click our new collection, hit Control V, and you've got the same kind of mess of a bunch of things. So we want to delete everything we don't want. So let's go down here and look for the um, something that says hair or H-A-R on it. And that should be the correct armature. You can select it, hit G and move, and it should move the mesh with it. So this is what you don't want to delete. So don't delete that. Shift click everything else, then right click and delete hierarchy. And then you should have just your armature for the hair, whoops, armature for the hair and the hair mesh. So with the armature selected, go to the object constraint properties. Let's bring back our body. Okay, object constraint. So we have our new hair. This is now our new hair, not the old hair, even though it looks exactly the same. And then you can click the magnifying glass, uh, sorry, the eyedropper and click the rig and the hair is attached. Or you can click here and navigate to Femme A Annika rig, but the eyedropper is easier. And then you can test it by going to pose mode and hitting rotate and you can see the hair now follows. So that's how you add one of the cross compatible hairstyles. Almost every single mesh in this character has some form of color adjustment. So I can walk you through how that works. Um, there, the, the shaders, the materials are all organized roughly the same way. So if you click a mesh here, click any of these with the orange bar on top, it shows you what texture you have selected. And the way I usually do them is there's some kind of node with yellow inputs for color and you and there are textures or hue adjustments that you can drag to this mix node and you can adjust between whatever you just inputted. So that's one way I typically do adjustments. There's another version which is using a hue adjustment and the skin does that so the um, the textures here, these are all basically different levels of makeup. So right now she's got very light makeup and you can make her have dark makeup. And then you can adjust the hue so you can make her like green. And then you can adjust that to make her more green or less green. So those are the two basic ways I do color adjustment. So just kind of explore around and take a look. If you want to add your own custom clothing, I have a link in the description below on a tutorial for how to do that. So definitely check that out if it's interesting. That's about it. I hope that helped you get familiar with Annika and I hope she works out for you. Thanks.